right, and welcome back. Last time we talked about section 4.1 on uh, exponential functions. And at the end, we looked at this example where we looked at uh, how, much, how much money you would have if you invested $200,000 uh, for 20 or 30 years at an interest rate fixed at 5% uh, with a compounding number of times of one per year, so not that many. Um, today what we're going to look at is 4.2 and we're just going to add one word here natural exponential functions and we're going to look at this example essentially where this number n which relates to the number of interest compoundings per year we're going to look at what happens when that number gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger Okay, so instead of your interest compounding once per year, it compounds two times, or three, or four, or five, or a hundred, or instantaneously it's compounding. That's called continuously compounding uh, interest. And that relates to dun, 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 the natural number E. So if you take this fraction, 1 plus 1 over n, and raise that to the nth power, and you just make a big table. Okay, you just make a big old table. I should get rid of this equality. Uh, you just make a table of these values here. So n, the fraction f, if you just start going two dot 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 a thousand dot 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 if you make this table of these fraction values and you do it for ridiculously large numbers right in the end this number what does it start off as it starts off as two and then it starts off as one plus one half squared so one and a half squared two point two five Okay, you keep going. I'm not going to do it for a thousand. At infinity, we call this number e. It's irrational. It's called Euler's number. Um, but it is the result of taking this fraction and looking at its end behavior as n goes to infinity. Okay, it's approximately equal to 2.71. Okay, it's approximately 2.71. This is Euler's number. It's irrational. That means it's non-terminating decimal that never repeats itself. Um, and we call that the natural exponential base. The natural exponential base. So last time we looked at exponentials, which were some number to the xth power. If you make that number e, Like this, we call that the natural exponential function. E is just about 2.71, so this is just a number raised to the x power. It's no different graphically than the things we did last time. The graph still levels off at zero and comes way up. It shoots off exponentially on the right, uh, so it's really no different than what we did before. Um, it still abides by all of the rules of exponents. If you plug in a negative x, you take the reciprocal and then you compute it that way. If you plug in a positive x, you just compute it like you would here. Uh, computations with e usually involve calculators. Um, so there's that. Uh, the reason I haven't left this or haven't erased this example is because this is the end result of where we're going today. Uh, the natural exponential has a very, very similar form to what you see here. Right, this looks oh so close to what we've got circled over here. Right, if we replace r with one and take t equal to one, that's literally the same thing. Right, so this is a really interesting problem. Uh, what if the number of things 
the number of times we get our interest compounded in a year. What if that goes to infinity? What if we're here? Do we change this form here on the right, highlighted in red, to some form involving E? Do we have to like multiply it by two or something? If we let N go to infinity, what is our interest rate formula? I will leave these numbers down here. And we will remember that this is for 30 years. This was for 20 years, both compounded one time per year on $200,000. So here, let's sort of look at this now. So I'm going to take this function, uh, 1 plus r over n, all raised to the nt power. I'm just going to start rewriting things just slightly. Okay. Uh, first thing I'm going to do is, uh, may, it may look strange, but I'm going to do this. I'm going to take out of the exponent. which was nt before, I'm going to take out r times t. Okay, so here, n over t times, or divided by rt times rt. That's totally fine. The interest rate was non-zero, t is non-zero, that's fine. Okay, this looks odd perhaps, but this is what we're doing. That cancels these out, right? T over T. We agree? Okay. This results in, I'm just going to erase them now, this. The exponent has changed. Nothing else has changed. But now, take a look at what we've got here. R over N n over r. Those are really close to each other, aren't they? Right? They're reciprocals. So let's let's just call n over r equal to some number m. Then 1 over m is equal to r over n. So now let's rewrite our formula in terms of m. p times 1 plus 1 over m to the mth power times rt. Let's remember though our powers of exponents. We can write that like this. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to let n n go to infinity. Now if n goes to infinity, what happens to m? If n gets bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger, the interest rate is fixed, r is a fixed number, then m goes to infinity too, doesn't it? But look at what's in these big brackets. If m goes to infinity, That's the same as this going to infinity, which is this, e, the natural exponential. So this turns into, as n goes to infinity, your p, principal amount, times e, 2.718 dot, dot dot dot, raised to the r t power. a of t equals pert. Okay, P, E to the R, T. This corresponds to the situation of having a, an investment of P dollars at some interest rate R invested for T years where every instant of every day it's compounded. Okay, the interest rate is essentially divided over every single instant in a year. 
and then you, it compounds on itself throughout the year. This is continuous, continuous interest, and it's described through this natural exponential function. And now what I want to do is compare this to what we had before. And it's, it's going to seem ridiculous, and it is. This is like an idealized investment. Okay, there we go. So let's remember, this was after 30 years of compound interest. This was after 20 years. Let's make a similar table for continuous investment at 5% on $200,000 after 20 years and after 30 years. Here we go. So we take 200,000 times E, which is fixed number, to the 0.05 that's a small number in an exponent. That doesn't seem to help us, right? Times 20. And we'll do the same thing for 30. And we're going to see what we get. So if you have a calculator, you can, you can do this along with me. I have not done the calculations ahead of time. So on my calculator, I have this button for E. I just push it. And then I'm going to exponentiate it with 0.05 times, excuse me, e to the 0 0.05. That gives me 1.0512 something, something, something. Now I need to exponentiate that again to the 20th. I get 2.0512. Two point seven one eight. Okay, something like this. For thirty, I get. Let's see if we can grab this number. Okay, if for thirty, I get four point four eight. That's 200,000 times 4.4816. So I'll round it down. So what happens when we multiply these numbers by um, 200,000? Well, the first one turns into 896,337. The next one turns into... 200,000 times 2.718, 543,600. So that's continuous investment, a continuous compound investment at 5% per year for 20 years and 30 years, respectively. So we've earned quite a bit more money. About 30,000 in the second case, and about 13,000 in the first. This is preferable, right? Every time your number of compounds, with a fixed rate, every time your number of compoundings per year goes up, you end up earning more per year. Because it, it gives you time for that money that you invest to make money on itself. Your interest makes money on itself throughout the year. So as you, if you can collect your interest early and then reinvest it throughout that whole year, that interest is going to collect more money for you. So it's not always the case for a given situation that you want more compoundings per year. For example, if the interest rate goes down, right, a fixed rate one time per year compared to a smaller fixed rate compounded two times per year, it might not be worth it to take that second one. Uh, you might make more uh, for the fixed higher rate compounding one time per year. Uh,
this formula the, will tell you the continuous case, the previous formula, uh, a of t equals p 1 plus r over n to the nt, will tell you how to compute the other version, the finite number of compoundings per year. But regardless, both of these can help you with interest problems in life, which is something that most of you, I would guess, at some point in your life will come across. So with that, I'm done. Okay, it is 10.53 in the morning. That first lecture was much longer than I wanted it to be. This one really was not that long. Uh, and that's it. So these, these types of uh, functions can be used to describe lots of other things. Uh, bacterial growth is exponential. Um, other types of things are exponential. Population growth, for example. Although population growth is logarithmic, uh, you learn about that eventually in some other class. Uh, because a as resources dwindle, the exponential growth gets curtailed. Right? It's exponential for a bit, and then it levels off as resources become scarcer. Um, but for a time, in population growth, in a, in a, a, a right in biology classes, you would uh, you would use exponential functions to describe the growth of the population of a species or something. Anyway, I digress. So uh, that's it for the week. Uh, at the end of this week, on the 26th, we've got a quiz on section 3.1 and 3.2. We've got class on Wednesday, starting at 8 Eastern time. We're now at daylight savings, uh, so please be careful of that. And office hours, Tuesday and Thursday, if you have any questions on the homework. Homework for sections uh, 3, 3, 4, 1, and 4, 2 is due next Monday, the 29th. And we are coming down to it, I think. We're almost in April. That's, that's, that's awesome. Happy spring. It offic the, the season officially changed to spring over the weekend. So happy spring. Uh, the temperatures are going up. So get outside, stay safe, uh, and, uh, and try to relax. Try to enjoy some sun. All right? Until next time.